Hello viewers and welcome to Spotlight here on Hope TV where you look and live. And here on Spotlight we do our very best to bring to you persons who are changing our culture through their voices, through their actions. And on this show we are honored to have one of those voices whom when he speaks you have to roll your eyes because his views are totally counterculture but at the same time coming from a Christian premise and it's none other than Mark Bichachi. Thank you so Welcome much. Welcome to Spotlight. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, of course when you think about Mark Bichachi he's so many things. We can say that we have with us uh, on Spotlight today a package. It's difficult to put him in one place and he's a whole lot of things good things. Mm -hmm. And as you are part of this conversation, please do text us your views on 22232. We'll be glad to receive them. Also follow us uh, and engage us on Twitter and also on Facebook. I will be glad to hear your views. Again, this is Spotlight with Mark Bichache. Good Thank to you see so you. so much. I was almost wondering who it is you're talking about. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a very big one. <laughs> I'm not well, sure it's no, me. Just, just, you, know, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. uh, even the name of a person, yes. uh, you know, just packages expectations like for instance bichachi you know you know bichachi is big you know here bichachi and it's a corporate it's an entity by itself but you, you know? know that's that's the correct order mm -hmm. the, the a lot of us are obsessed with titles mm -hmm. um doctor pastor reverend archbishop mm -hmm. superstar you know all of those things and everyone now is a brand mm -hmm. but we forget the core promise that god made to abraham mm -hmm. he said I will make your name great. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen is you do not need titles to your name. Mm -hmm. You just need God to make that name great. Okay. That, that's, that's what God needs to do uh, for people so that we stop seeking after earthly titles and we begin to just leave out what God put in you in the first place. You know, when you and talk about God making you a name, yeah. um, well, of course, we know many of us are busy. Yes. Making out on making our names and even mm. checking out whether they're big, yes. you know, <laughs> testing them now and again. But uh, I'll not ask you to talk about this. But yes. let me say, sometimes many people wonder where did Bichachi come from because <laughs> he seems to have emerged someplace last year in the middle of last year, mm -hmm. and uh, in the midst of the elections and all the debates going on, and we saw this Bichachi man, and yes. since then he's been on a roll. Like you know, <laughs> he's one of the you know key voices when it mm -hmm. comes to uh, shaping the political economic views in this country. But that's for another day yes. you know but just for now uh, in that same line of you know who is Bichachi just mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about who you are maybe mm -hmm. where you went to school and uh, yeah, just just a, just a little bit about yourself oh okay mm -hmm. I, I, I my high school I was in two high schools I was in Maseno school mm -hmm. and then I was in Jorah boys which is opposite of what you do, do uh, uh, yes, those are two yes, great schools yeah definitely. yeah yes. but back then Jorah wasn't so great uh, it was, it was, <laughs> but it's always uh, been on the chat yeah, it's always, been, yes. it's always yeah. been on the map mm -hmm. then uh, got out of there went to South Africa for a year and a half, mm -hmm. um, then came back, went to university, mm -hmm. and I was in class when a lecturer was teaching about engineering. I did not enjoy it at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. um, and then I finished campus. Mm -hmm. Then I got into political communication. So the first campaign I ever worked for was the Martha Karua campaign in uh, 20, uh, um, 2011, 2012, up to 2013. Mm -hmm. um, just shaping her online profile, managing her, uh, her interviews and, and, and did the first um, online debates with Ask Martha Thursdays and things like that. So that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. After that, I was in and out of the country a lot. I was consulting for various political figures uh, across uh, the continent. Um, just before the elections in Kenya, I was consulting for Nana Akufo Ado, who's now the president of, of Ghana. So I think I did a good job. Wow, definitely, <laughs> yeah. yes. So um, then I came back to Kenya. Uh, I, I haven't uh, been busy outside of Kenya since uh, because I believe there's a lot to be done in in my own in my own country. It's and, one, you, and you're yeah. actually doing a lot, you know. I hope so. Just I, by 
your views on you know on different uh, political platforms yeah. and media platforms mm -hmm. whether it is radio or television or social media yes. uh, your voice is, a, is 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 an important voice mm -hmm. and it's the good point. thing about your mm -hmm. voice is that it sets up debate mm -hmm. you know yeah. it sets up conversation yes. it also elevates the people mm -hmm. uh, to think boldly yes. you know you you kind of have this thing that uh, makes people want to be bold about their own exactly. views because when you bring out your views mm -hmm. They've not been written anywhere. Yeah. You know, no one has heard them in mm. another person, but yes. they're just coming from you. Mm. And you feel these bold, these bold views um, are really causing a conversation, yes. which is uh, what we need to expand our our you know our thinking and our world view. Absolutely, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what, what's critical about the the political discourse and the reason why we embrace democracy. We embrace democracy so that the individual can have the space to express themselves um, not and you see the problem with how we've taken the right to self-expression is we've taken it to the extreme to, to not to the extreme to fashion and 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 things like that but really it's about the ability to expand a philosophical thought mm -hmm. um, uh, in the 50s and 60s there was great debate between communism socialism and capitalism and 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 what was the best model but now now we've all come to the center and the space for uh, debate has reduced and as the space of deba debate reduced we produced the likes of t Donald Trump and Brexit and all these right wing uh, parties that are now springing up all over Europe that have protectionist agendas because up to this point we've basically stifled conversation mm -hmm. and, and, and whenever you do that there's always a subculture that begins to happen because the conversations all go underground and conversations Conversations go underground, what comes out is really nice. Mm -hmm. So what needs to happen, especially in the Kenyan uh, political space, is there needs to be space for thought leadership. I, I challenged universities once, I was speaking to a group of lecturers and I asked them, how is it that universities are waiting for politicians in the ministry, in parliament, to ratify what universities teach? Mm -hmm. Who's the intellectual? And, and that's the problem, that a lot of us have given up our thinking privileges to the political class, and yet we all agree that the IQ is questionable collectively. <laughs> you see, so, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. so you, you, how do you then question their IQ and then give them the power to make your decisions? Mm -hmm. You see, yeah. And mm -hmm. now, now that you um, you talk about in the philosophical engagements, mm -hmm. uh, just going back to the language of the individual, yes. I'm sure when you have this very passionate for you know mm -hmm. philosophical uh, you know thoughts and all that then you must be coming from somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Yes. There must, either you're coming from experience or you're coming from a place of, uh, you know, just you're coming from some place. Mm -hmm. And we just want to hear maybe some, maybe three or four values mm -hmm. that really drive Bichachi mm -hmm. uh, because it comes out in your passion. Yes. Uh, interesting. The, where, my school of thought is this. When the Bible says that you must put off the old man, in, in Ephesians, it says you must continuously put off the old man, okay, and put on the new man. Meaning, in my thinking, that man was created much like software that there is always an upgrade. You come with uh, uh, Fury 1.0, but by the time you die, God is expecting a Fury 10.0. Well, I'm, I'm wondering now where I am at. Right <laughs> you <now>. should, yes. <laughs> you <know? laughs> and and yes. that means there is always a better version of me mm -hmm in me waiting to be revealed to the earth therefore one of my core values is constant improvement mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. if uh, if you are the same as you were last year you've already failed the world might consider you a success but concerning the kingdom if you're not continuously bearing more fruit and fruit that abide then you've lost the cause the second cause is intellect we must become an intellectual people we must become a thinking people we must stop uh, the christians who can be sprayed with the doom and praise god uh, that is a surrender of your iq uh, and therefore one of my beliefs 
is that faith must come from knowledge. Uh, a counter to what people have taught that faith is the absence of knowledge. You know, they say faith does not make sense. No, mm -hmm. quite contrary. It makes it makes sense to the believer. It should make absolute sense to you. Uh, so there's that intellectualism. And thirdly, passion for humanity. Okay, uh, passion for humanity. One of my key principles is I will not live in a society where there's private opul opulence and public squalor. In other words, you, you jump through the muddle to get into your five-bedroom house. Mm -hmm. You drive through the, the ghetto to get to your ten-bedroom mansion. It does not make sense. Right. I would rather have a three-bedroomed house in, in, a, in a nice uh, environment than have a ten-bedroomed house and have electric fences and, and 15 dogs simply because I've allowed my environment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to go into squalor. Mm -hmm. So there's public impact, there's intellect, and there's a constant improvement mm -hmm. of the person. Okay. Yes. It's, it's, it's an interesting package there. Mm. I know sometimes it's good to get into the mind and the heart of the man. Yes. You know, <laughs> then we get to understand where the voice is coming yes, from. Yes, what drives uh, And, mm. uh, you know, you've talked about these values and they are mm. definitely very, uh, you know, godly and yes. they are biblical. And yes. you very Bible-centered and if you open the scriptures, you'll mm. find these things yes. with the big prophets yes. uh, in scripture. Mm. Now, our culture mm. right now and the church, mm -hmm. specifically when you talk about the greed in this country, yes. which oftentimes we have the technical name corruption. Yes. And we'll keep asking this question mm -hmm. because we've never gotten a good answer. Mm -hmm. Huge church, mm -hmm. huge corruption. Yes. Statistically, the church is superior. Mm -hmm. And, but also corruption, you yes. know, is a huge monster, which almost sounds like a paradox. Yes. Because what we think mm. uh, from a day-to-day -day thought yes. is that the presence of godly people yes. should eat into this monster. Exactly. But it feels like this monster uh, has, in a way, uh, made silenced yes. the church, who is supposed to be the transforming voice. Exactly. Now, why is this? There's, there's a scripture that uh, Christians like to quote halfway in Chronicles. It says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, then they jump, I will hear from heaven, and I will heal their land. But that's mm -hmm. not what it says. It says, humble themselves, which means they're proud. Then it says, turn from their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. Not ask the politicians to turn, not ask the president to turn, but no, we are the ones to turn. So the corruption is not in the world. The corruption is in the church. And therefore the world manifests what is in the church. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. In other words, the, the, what we must understand is that the church is guilty of the sin of Gehazi. Okay? Gehazi was Elisha's servant. Okay, Elisha's prodigy, all right? Elisha heals Naaman. Now, what is interesting about Naaman is Naaman is part of the army that used to terrorize Israel, okay? Naaman was part of the problem Elisha was facing. So when Naaman comes for healing, he has leprosy. When Naaman is healed of leprosy, he comes to Elisha and he tells Elisha, listen, I will give you great wealth. I've come with many robes, much gold and silver. I'll give it to you. This is my offering. And Elisha tells him, no, 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 I do not want any of your offering. Go back with it. But Gehazi, on hearing that offering has not been taken, chases after Naaman and tells him, please give me a portion of what you are going to give my master. So he gives it to Gehazi. When Elisha speaks to Gehazi, he says the same leprosy that was on Naaman is now on you. Mm -hmm. Meaning that when the servants of God partake in offering and tithe from the corrupt, they become as corrupt as the corrupt they get the same leprosy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's the last you hear of Gehazi. So what happened in the church? Every Sunday on our TV screens, we see corrupt politicians go into church and give an offering and not only that, stand in the pulpit and speak. So what have we just done? Mm -hmm. We've traded places. 
So the church has taken upon itself the leprosy that is upon Naaman, and therefore how then can you speak against what you already have? And then you see it practically in the church, because not all churches, but many churches, you will notice that to become an elder, it is determined by the car you drive, the house you live in, and the weight of your wallet. Mm -hmm. So if that is how you determine in the eldership of your church, then aren't you already corrupt? Mm -hmm. Because you're exhibiting the traits of the Pharisees. Christ called them uh, vipers. They, they, they move on their belly, meaning that it is your greed that causes you to move. Mm -hmm. You will not wake up until your stomach says so. In other words, you're in a church where the only way you will succeed is if we can eat from you. And therefore, leadership is based on economy. You know, when you say that, uh, definitely it doesn't sit very well mm. with a lot of church it, leaders. It should not. Because <laughs> our view mm. as a society, yes. most of the times, mm. even from the point of the church, mm. is that corruption is with others mm. and not with the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, now when you speak about corruption being in the church, and bring that uh, understanding mm -hmm. that you have brought over, uh, you know, Gehaz. Yeah. That's the, the uh, you yes. know. Then um, I'm quickly jumping into the New Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, you've spared my thought there, yeah. and uh, bringing the the prodigal son, mm -hmm. right? Who came to his senses, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Now, how does sense look like? Mm -hmm. How does a senseful church look like? You see, it's quite the journey. Mm -hmm. you've got to do what is called repentance and restitution. Okay? Now, repentance is an interesting word which the church has confused for I am sorry. You know, when you tell the average Christian to repent, they'll come and tell you, Pastor, I'm very sorry, I stole. That's not repentance, that's being sorry. Repentance is this, essentially. When you thought the earth was flat, Okay, and then new information came and you realized that the earth is actually a sphere. That change of mind is called repentance. Okay, mm -hmm. now what is the repentance the prodigal son mm -hmm. received while he was in the pit with pigs? When he had taken his inheritance, he had become his own provider. Keyword. Mm -hmm. When he repented, when he came to himself, he realized that his father was his provider. Key change. So what needs to happen? If God is our provider, then our testimonies will change. We will no longer have testimonies of I bought a car, I bought a house, because God is the one who provided we will instead have testimonies of I, my character has improved because this is fruit. I have become more patient. I've become more kind. I've become more generous. I've become more loving. I've become more long-suffering. I've become more joyous. That is a testimony. Mm -hmm. Buying a house is not a testimony. It's a purchase. What, what I hear you say, uh, Mark, is that then push of what we can call the prosperity gospel yes. in the church, mm. whereby faith is manifested uh, through a strong faith money. is manifested through money and material acquisition, yes. has also in its own way driven the Christian into the mammon world, yes. and into greed and into the corruption yes. that we see in the wider culture. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because we need to understand that according to Jesus, wealth is not sought. Because he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added. Meaning that accurate wealth is a byproduct. You understand? There is no sugar manufacturer who knows how to make molasses. They know how to make sugar. Molasses is a byproduct. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you become an expert in molasses, you've totally missed the sugar. You see? And if you become an expert in mama, 
then the bible says you will pierce your faith with your heart with many pangs and you will shipwreck your faith mm -hmm. so that means that the shipwreck we are seeing today is based on a church that has put mammon first now this 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 is interesting because uh when we walk on that thought mm -hmm that the big factor in corruption, yes. uh, however you look at it, is the church. Yes. But on the other hand, uh, there is an expectation mm. by, allow me to use the word citizenry, mm. and also the political order, yes. that the church mm. will be of help when yes. it comes to the matter corruption. Yes. Now, that expectation, mm. is it again a misplaced expectation then? It, it's not. Mm -hmm. That's the second part of repentance. So mm -hmm. the church must begin to realize and begin here. You need to begin by number one, kicking out people in your leadership and eldership who only have that position because of their wallet. That is called repentance. You need to begin to stop seeking after money first. You need to begin to seek the kingdom first. What is the kingdom? And I need to define because mm -hmm. not many people miss it. Jesus said the kingdom is in you and it's in me. Therefore, my first priority is to seek your well-being. When I seek your well-being, I'm seeking the kingdom of God. Okay? So it's not very complicated. Seeking the kingdom is not reading the Bible and knowing it all of it. No, no, no. Seeking the kingdom is seeing it in each other and seeking what is best for the other person. Okay. So in other words, when you sit in your order of priority of things, do you come first or do others come first? Okay? Mm -hmm. It says they considered, they esteemed the other better than themselves, mm -hmm. which is really the miracle of Pentecost. Can I explain Pentecost a little bit? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. A yes. little bit. Mm -hmm. You see, I used to think Pentecost was about miracles and speaking in tongues. But if I read it carefully, I realized that John and Peter used to do miracles before Pentecost. They, they healed the sick, they cast out demons. So Pentecost is not about miracles. But Pentecost is about one accord. It is the first time in the Bible they were not competing. It's the first time Peter was not asking who will sit at the right, who will sit at the left, who's senior, who's more loved by God. Meaning that the accurate understanding of a Pentecostal church must be a unified church where we think more highly of the other than we do of ourselves. When you talk about that, it takes me to the acts, one of the acts, early Acts statements that they were, they were so united yes. that not even one lacked anything. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is what is called seeking the kingdom mm -hmm. first. Okay. In other words, you must be willing to be poor, according mm -hmm. to Isaiah, so that someone else might be rich. Mm -hmm. And that is the first that God requires. Mm -hmm. So in my opinion, if you fast food and there's food in your fridge, at a hunger strike. If you fast food by giving it to the needy, that is an accurate fast. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is seeking the kingdom of fast. But there must be an element of restitution. Okay? So right now we are fighting corruption. How many pastors are A, willing themselves to go, listen, so and so you gave me money. Okay? And I have seen that you've been corrupt. We as a church would like to refund you your money in full. The kingdom is not built by thieves, mm -hmm. okay? So that's one. There must be restitution. This is what happened to the tax collector who Jesus lived in his house. He went and took all the corrupt money he had gotten and he gave it back. And what does Jesus say? Today, salvation has come to you and your household. So before we can save our household, there must be restitution in the household of God. We need to ask our members who've been corrupt. First, we return the offering they gave us. Secondly, they need to return that money to the state. They should not come to us and say, oh, pastor, I've been implicated in corruption. Pray for me. No, 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 no. Tell that guy, unless you restore that money, tell him like Peter, perish you and your money. Take it back. You know, what you are calling for, uh, Vichachi, yes. is a radical reformation. That, it's the only way. And uh, that radical reformation, mm. let me ask you, knowing mm. the character yes. of the Kenyan pastor, yes. do you think that's something that we can expect at all 
in this culture? Hallelujah, that's a good question. Any pastor who does not do that is not a pastor. That is a wolf in sheep's clothing. Let's be very clear. Let's be very clear. You know, Jesus said, many will come in my name, meaning more than half. So it is my full expectation that more than half of the preachers listening to me are false because they will not do it. But this is a good thing for the true body. This is a good thing for the sheep because now the wool is being taken out. Now you can see the wolves and you can see the true shepherds. You can see them. Mm -hmm. So the reality of the matter is this. I am not bothered with them. You know, many means more than half. With the more than half that will not do the right thing. I am bothered with the remnant because there is a remnant mm -hmm. that has not bowed. And you see, for God to save a nation and for God to save Sodom and Gomorrah as an example, he did not need 50% of the population to be righteous. He needed 10 or 5. So we just need 10 or 5 righteous pastors to say, in my congregation, you did a government tender. You supplied air. You brought me a million shillings. You brought me 100,000. Here, sir, have it back. That we will know from today that that is the accurate church of God. Mm -hmm. That is the accurate body of God. That is someone who's hearing God. Mm -hmm. You see? But the people who will bring those people to make them kneel and sanctify them with our prayers without them restituting their resources back to the people, back to the mothers who died in hospital because there was no medicine, back to the children who have special needs who can't be treated because we don't have medicine, back to the people who died in their homes because the road was not built because you stole the money. If you cannot restore that, listen, religion that God accepts to be true is what? To plead the cause of the widow and the needy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is false religion to defend the corrupt and not defend the widow. Mm -hmm. Because it is the widow who was robbed. It is the needy who was robbed. And if we cannot defend them by asking for restitution, then we miss it. What pastors mm -hmm. should be saying, listen, if you stole and you do not want to be found, then bring the money, we will return it to government. 80% mm -hmm. Christian, meaning 80% of the corruption comes from where? You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it's interesting because, again, on the radical thinking, mm -hmm. uh, this, the church as it is, as we speak right now, mm -hmm. is not driven by the prophetic. Mm -hmm. The church is more driven by popularism. Yes. And the idea of popularism mm. has been confused with evangelism. Yes. That you should be what people are mm. so that you can be able to grow, mm. you know, as, as far, you know, yeah. as a church. Mm. But now when you now bring uh, the point of uh, this radical shift, mm. then you're talking about uh, the church becoming smaller and the church, the pews becoming black thinner, yes. and thinner. Yes. And uh, wouldn't we have pushed back the gains of the cathedrals and of the mega churches and when people think, oh, our pastor has gone insane? Let, let me put it to you in perspective. The most successful church had 12 people and one of them was Judas. It's the most successful church. <laughs> Okay. So we need to understand that the growth of the church is not of necessity by the numbers. It is by the character of the people inside that particular building. You grow in depth, not in numbers. And this is the problem of these felt need uh, congregations because I pity a lot of preachers who have to preach sermons that are pleasing and exciting. I, I tell people, listen, I have a meeting every Wednesday, okay, where I invite people to come and we reason together. Literally, we go through the Bible and reason through it. Now, the best part about that is I really don't care who comes. I don't care how many people come. For me, it is an opportunity to teach the word. It sets me free. Because the problem always comes when your highest giver is also the most corrupt. You can't teach about corruption. You see? So the churches need to set themselves free. Listen, you do not have a church member if that church member comes to your church because the music is good. That's not a church member. 
it is not a church member who comes to your church because you you speak good english mm -hmm. that's not a church member let's be very honest it is not a church member who comes to your church because it is next door that's not a church member mm -hmm. Okay, a church member is the one who's willing to find John the Baptist in the wilderness near the Jordan. Mm -hmm. That's a church member. Someone who's willing to pay the price for truth. That's the thing. You see, Jesus' model of church is very interesting. He avoids Jerusalem completely. His brothers come to him and say, why don't you go to Jerusalem? All the big preachers are in Jerusalem. All the big people, all the guys with a title are in Jerusalem. You are in the backwater towns of Galilee and Nazareth. What does Jesus say? Mm -hmm. That true church members are seekers of the word. And let's be very careful. Jesus said something that people keep missing. He said, if you seek after a sign... You are a wicked generation. Kept saying, wicked generation seeks after a sign. What do we have in the church today? We are full of people who want to roll on the ground, who want to laugh, holy laughter, who want to do all that. It is a sign. And Jesus did signs. But let's remember, who are the signs for? Unbelievers. So if you seek a sign, are you a believer? So this is the problem we have. If you fill your church with seekers of signs, let me tell you, the mm -hmm. day you teach truth, look at John chapter 6. The moment Jesus taught them the truth, called himself the bread of life, and he asked them to eat it, they left. They left. The multitude left. The 70 left. He was left with the 12. And um, uh, there is now an individual Christian mm -hmm. who is saying... Uh, I don't need to wait to go to church on Sunday, yes. and I don't need to uh, hear it from my pastor, but yes. I am really uh, decided mm -hmm. on, you know, just taking a break from this greed and from mm -hmm. this corruption, and what is, what is it that an individual Christian can do? Good question. Mm -hmm. There is something so significant about the disciples, mm -hmm. the 12 disciples, that I found very, very interesting. The 12 disciples are not recipients of passive miracles. Okay? Mm -hmm. None of them joined Jesus because a miracle happened to them. In fact, to the contrary, the 12 disciples are miracle workers. It's a very interesting thing. Okay? Of the classes of people who interacted with Jesus, we've got Pharisees, Sadducees, the multitudes, and the disciples of course, and then the, 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 the Romans. Now, interesting, the disciples are different in the sense that of all of these people, everyone came to ask questions, everyone came to test Jesus, everyone came to do things and receive from Christ. Mm -hmm. They came to work with Christ. They became his fingers. In fact, the miracle of the five loaves and two fish was not done by Jesus. Because he broke it and gave to his disciples. It is in the disciples' hands that the bread and the fish multiplied. Therefore, the individual Christian, if you're going to move in this new dimension with God, you must become the miracle worker, not the miracle seeker. Mm -hmm. In other words, you must be the instrument which God uses to effect change in your sphere. So the Christian who's listening to me and he's in the tendering process, whether he's a civil servant, he's, he's in a uh, business person, whoever, it is you who needs to cause the miracle of no corruption to happen. Mm -hmm. It is you to be the whistleblower. That's how you become the miracle worker because you'll blow the whistle and they will not touch you. That's how you become the miracle worker. It is you not to sign a corrupt document. It is you not to do a corrupt tender. It is you to apply for a tender legitimately and get it legitimately. That's how you become a miracle worker. That's how you change the world. You see, you have got to decide if you live in the middle of Sondumiru, okay, and, and, and the only corruption you see is a corrupt chief. You need to be the person to stand up and say, no, chief, 
No more. Mm -hmm. Not here. You shall not be corrupt here. And let me tell you, the season is here. They will not touch you. That is how you become a miracle worker. You understand? So you need to be a disciple of Christ. A disciple of Christ is not someone who goes to church and says, Pastor, pray, please pray for me. Let me tell you, who tells you the pastor's prayer reach, reaches heaven before you? <laughs> we must now begin to have a church that says, by the way, I've already prayed. I've already prayed. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. This is the kind of faith that we need. You see, what, what is interesting, and you people need to learn to read the times. Mm -hmm. For a very long time, we had uh, preachers whose sole gift was making us roll on the ground and laugh and things like that. No, these were good signs. But if you've noticed of late, the, the, of late, the pastors we have are doing very strange things. They're jumping on people's stomachs. They're, they're spraying people with doom. They're making them eat grass. What is God trying to say? He's saying that season is over. Okay? Mm -hmm. Why? Because that season was a sign. When we fell under the power of the Holy Spirit, God was saying he wants dead people mm -hmm. because he can only use you when you're dead to self. Okay? When we laughed in holy laughter, God was saying, Isaac is about to be born. I'm about to keep my promise. You did not see Isaac laughing throughout his life. Mm -hmm. He did things. So in other words, what we saw in that season, it is time to do it. Mm -hmm. God wants us to be slain in the spirit, not by rolling in the pulpits and pews of church, but by being dead to this world, by going to your workplace and being the incorruptible one. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. By dying to your greed, to being that person who goes into your bank account and say, Honey, I stole two million. We have 1,999,000. I'm giving it back. That's the kind of slain God is looking for. Viewers, uh, this is Spotlight, and we are talking to Mark Bichachi, and we are engaging the matter of church and corruption. And we are going to take a short break, and then after this, we'll be back again on this very intense conversation. Stay with us. Uh, this is Spotlight here on Hope TV, where you look and live.